Welcome to this edition of the Hazmat IQ Chemical of the Month. This month we'll be using the chemical acetaldehyde. And let's just remember what our mission here is. Our mission today is we're going to take five to ten minutes, we're going to pull out our charts in our NIOSH pocket guide, we are going to size up acetaldehyde in a few minutes, we're going to verify it using the book in less than two minutes, which will allow us to safely operate in the hot zone dressed in proper PPE, bringing the appropriate equipment with us. So here's what we're going to do first. Let's, let's look at the container, acetaldehyde. The name is right there, so we know the name. Using the system, when we know the name, we, are, we can size up in 20 seconds. What does size up mean? Size up means that you can make a damn good guess on what you predict it'll, how it'll behave. So how do you do this thing called size up? you got to go to the charts. So you can size up a chemical based on a name, either using chart number one or chart number two. And when you size up a chemical, you got to ask yourself, are you above the line or below the line? And once you get that information, you've got the standard operating procedure or guidelines on how you're going to operate. So going back to acetaldehyde, well, I'm going to use chart number two because it's, it's much easier for me. What you do when you use chart number two is you ask yourself, is the first name of the chemical listed in this alphabetical list? The name of the chemical, acetaldehyde. I go to the A's, no acetaldehyde. So that takes me to the no box, which points to the above the line SOG. I got a picture. I've never been on acetaldehyde. I have no clue of the hazards. But so what this does, it's a feel good moment for me. Hell, I know how acetaldehyde is potentially going to act. How is it going to act? Well, it's a gas, so I know the hot zone's 300 feet. It's a flammable gas. That gas also polymerizes, and it's got an IP. That gas is corrosive. And for now, since I don't know anything about acetaldehyde, acetaldehyde has fluorine in, in the size up. The next thing I predict, acetaldehyde is radioactive until proven otherwise. It is toxic in parts per million, and it is water and air reactive. Based on that information, I will wear turnout gear and SCBA if I'm a firefighter. I will wear level B if I'm a police officer or I work for the EPA. And if I'm military personnel, I'll wear mop gear. So you see what Joe just said, guys, is that once I get a name of a chemical, I need to begin to size up immediately. But when I size something up I've never been to, I need a cheat sheet that kind of keeps me in a safe side of this mission. This is what we just did. You don't have to create anything. You don't have to feel confused or fear. This standard operating guideline written in the above the line becomes now the way I dress, the meters I use, the hot zone, and when do I get a red light, which is when is it I get out of here because I'm going to get killed or hurt if I stay in this environment. Now we go to chart number three. So it says here, continue our chart three, so we go to three. And guys, and this is no different than what we did with the chemistry, which was something like uh, name the radical, which was a set, which means it has carbon and hydrogen, and then name the derivative, because if you remember the old tapes of Ron Edwards from the National Fire Academy, if I know the hazard and I know the family, I know the meters, the what's going to hurt me, the level of dress. So what's the family to acetaldehyde? Do you get yes to a set? Yes. Remember, that was the radical. What does that mean? It has carbon and hydrogen. That burns. That's a flammable clue. Now I look for the derivative, which is like the second name, and it's aldehyde. And now what we've done here is that we've given a number and a color, red 7. Why red 7? Because everyone that's not on the scene listening to the call knows now what you're on, what the hazards are, what are the meters, what this level of dress. And Joe will point to them. Look, so it's an aldehyde. Flammable, toxic, polymerized. I need a flammable meter. I need a toxic meter. I need a meter that tells me if the chemical is polymerizing. So what is that? Flammable, CGI. Toxic, PID, FID, Freon meter, or Drager tube. Polymerization. Well, polymerization is a reaction happening inside of a container, which increases heat. So I'll bring the temp gun. I go to my PPE compartment and I will wear turnout gear because this is a flammable gas. What about if you work for the EPA and you're segregating equipment or private company so that you can overpack it or lab pack it? They don't have turnout gear, so they go to their PPE compartment and they put on level B. 
So what we've done is this is our size up. Now we got to go to step number two of the system. And if you look here, step number two is where I go to the book and I will verify my size up in two minutes. So go to your book, go to page number two, and let's look at acetaldehyde together. See if we need to tweak that initial size. Now where does this happen on the call? This is at the rig. This is my vehicle. This is on my Humvee. I'm, report, I'm responding to a call. Someone's going to read the book and they're going to verify my size up. And if it doesn't match, I'll tweak. So look, the beauty of size up is this becomes what I look for in the book. I don't look over here. I don't look up behind here where it says what meter to carry. It's all right there. So the first thing we do is predict it was a gas, verify that it's a gas. That's found in physical description. Got that right. We predicted that the vapors were heavier than air. What is the molecular weight of air? You guys know, look at the, you look at the back of your charts in chart six. It's, it's, it's a atomic mass unit or the weight of 29. So now it's look 29. at acetaldehyde. It weighs 44. Where's it gonna go? Down. Next thing, is that flammable? We predicted it was a flammable. The book verified that it was a flammable gas. As soon as you know it's a flammable gas, you know that turnout gear is the highest level of protection. Does it have a flash point? Flash point, yes, minus 36 degrees. So I get off the rig, I shoot the asphalt where the spill is on the highway. The asphalt's 83 degrees. Is that liquid ready to burn? The yes. 83 degree spill temperature, compare it to the flash point, the answer is yes, flammable today. Next prediction, it polymerized. Well, let's check this out. You, you check polymerization by going to the DOT box and look for a P. Do you see a P there? No. Oh, it mustn't polymerize, you think. No, you got to go down here also to the reaction box and look what it says here. It, under, it easily undergoes polymerization. Why isn't there a P there? Hell if I know. I, there should be a P there. But look what else it says here. Prolonged contact with air may form peroxides. Peroxides blow up. Heck, that's nice to know. So we now need to bring peroxide paper. And if you remember what the peroxide paper is, it's your KI paper. So this is going to tell me if it has formed a peroxide, because I don't know it by looking at it. Next prediction. It's an, it's an IP. It has an IP. Well, when I go to the book, it's 10.22 IP. Is that PID yes or PID no if my PID has a 10.6 lamp? So is the PID yes, PID, PID yes. no. Good. Let's say you have the FID, which needs carbon and hydrogen. Is it carbon and hydrogen in the formula? Yes, FID yes. Is it an acid? Well, if you remember back, we taught you that 118, 123, 124, or 125s are the corrosive gas clues. This is guide 129. That is not a corrosive gas. You're looking for fluorine. Look in the formula here. I've got some CHs, some CHs, and an O, but no F. So there's no fluorine there. Now, well, remember, if, they, if you get no, it doesn't mean you're going to leave the pH paper and the F paper back on the rig. It right. just means that I'm going to wear it, but I don't expect it. I predict that it's not going to change. Great. So then we look, is it radioactive? Back to the DOT bo box. Guide number 161, 162, 163, 164, 165, and 166 are radioactive. This is 129, not radioactive. And then we go down to the water and the air reactions, and I look in the incompatibilities of reactivities, and I look for the word water or air, and we said next to note, note means read me, prolonged contact with air forms peroxides. So now we got to bring KI paper. Now remember guys, that's a reaction where that oxygen in the formula is going to convert into a peroxide. That's a slow reaction. Temperature guns measure fast reactions. Good, good. So we better bring the KI paper on this that's one because right. you're not going to have increased temperature when you've got formation of peroxide. Heaven forbid you go to a lab where this is the liquid because it's maintained in refrigeration and somebody wants to identify it and you put it on some type of Raman or IR spectroscopy and just the crushing or the shooting, it could detonate the peroxide. Okay, so here we go. Now, last thing I want to show you is, is it toxic? Yeah, remember we say everything's toxic. This one causes cancer. So check out what we've done. We've sized up. We've verified it in the book. 
we chose proper PPE, we chose proper meters, we enter the hot zone, we continue to work unless we hit a red light. If we hit a red light, we think to ourselves, what is my mission? If it's rescue, quick in, quick out. As long that, as the F paper yeah. doesn't turn what color? This F paper starts out pink, and if it turns yellow, where do I go? How fast? Very fast. Very quickly. Okay, so we've got that done. We know what to wear. We know what meters. We know the hazards. We're ready to go to work. So again, thanks for visiting us on this Hazmat IQ today, and uh, we'll see you again soon. If you guys want the new charts, uh, because this is version 16, go to our webpage at hazmatiq.com and look for the exchange chart program and follow the instructions. All right, take care. See Bye. you guys.